I um, am originally from Atlanta. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Atlanta is the largest city in the United States to have a black mayor for 50 years. It's um, the capital of the South. It has the busiest airport in the world. Uh, grew up here. Uh, my family owned a business in uh, defense contracting for about 20 years. I've worked in all kinds of forms of corporate America in uh, managing contracts and distribution. I actually was a, a shipping manager for Amazon.com for a while and uh, Pepsi Cola. I don't know how big Pepsi is in Italy, but uh, of course, Atlanta is the home of Coca Cola. So uh, <laughs> basically, um, I'm from Atlanta, enjoyed it, and have really enjoyed growing up. It is a very vibrant city. Of course, it is the city, it's the birthplace of Dr. Martin Luther King and the beginning of the civil rights movement in America. Um, so I just like to talk about, uh, when I talk about myself, I talk about my experiences, obviously in America and studying at university, political science and the world, and just trying to incorporate that into my podcast to show people that, that nothing is really new. Things have uh, always happened. It's just how they're framed and how they're, uh, given to the, uh, masses in terms of helping them, well, I shouldn't say help, I should say to direct their thoughts and their movements. So that's about me and a little political, sometimes controversial, but I do pretty well versed in American history, somewhat Western in the Western hemisphere and of course the continent of Africa. That's fantastic, that's absolutely interesting. Uh, as long as uh, it is important for us uh, in the right way, we talk about it because we need to put ourselves first. That is the most. That is actually what I want to say there. So one thing I would like to know from you is that uh, in this podcast, we try to pay attention to where we are coming from, our origin. We just do this intentionally. Can you tell me something about when you were still young? I mean, you were still like 12, 14. Uh, Tell me something that you, what do you see around you in those years? Okay, well, let me take you to, um, I'll take you further back than that. I am rare in the sense I am a third generation college graduate. Uh, Morehouse College, which is also the college for Dr. Martin Luther King, my grandfather graduated from Morehouse in 1916. Um, the sister college, too, is called Spelman, which my grandparents graduated from my parents, aunts and uncles. Why I think it's important when we're talking about our history is my grandfather had a PhD in education and he was unfortunately the victim of an assassination in 1939 because he attempted to uh, use a black construction company and purchase land from black landowners in order to build a school. Uh, he was killed in front of my mother and her two brothers my grandmother moved to another town in Georgia where she raised all three of them, all three uh, graduated from college. My father's a college graduate from Morehouse as well. Uh, his family owned a business, a uh, dry cleaners and a grocery store in Birmingham, Alabama in the 1930s and 40s. And the state did, was not appreciative of the success of the black community in Birmingham they uh, decided to build a road and destroy the community and the businesses there. My parents subsequently moved to Atlanta where my experience came because I was born in the 60s during the civil rights struggle. So when I got to the 70s and integration occurred in the United States, um, the things I saw was the changing of the guard, so to speak, publicly, and that there were no more um, segregated signs and instruments of segregation that were visible to the eye. They moved more to the background where they were barriers that were set up that you couldn't see, but you were locked out of certain types of employment, business ownership, political growth. So as a 10, 11, 12, 13 year old is, that's what I saw. And coming into my teenage years, the late seventies is when things really started to change. As I, as I mentioned, Atlanta is the largest city in the United States, has 6 million people, and it um, has had a black mayor for 50 years. So it's, it's a very prosperous city. Um, 
And our experience was such that we were able to open a business here and be successful here for a very long time. Um, but I guess to answer you, your more pertinent question is, in the 1970s, you saw a lot of struggle and change in the changing of gods and the accepting of the fact that black people, and maybe even so back then were known as Negroes, uh, were no longer going to be accepting of their position in American society. And Atlanta was a fertile ground for breaking those molds and chains of uh, oppression. Thank you so much for that. Uh, now, is there anything that could have uh, made Atlanta to stand out in terms of uh, a rebellion to this, um, to this system of oppression that wanted to keep oppression as a norm? So a city like Atlanta, a lot of individuals came out there to shape the future. Uh, is there anything that could have led to that? I mean, can you give us a little background as to why there were so many prominent people from that city who spoke out against the oppression of the states? Yeah, well, basically, in the South, obviously, it was segregated. The airport came to Atlanta in the late 40s. And you had to be very progressive to want that airport because that meant you brought in new people and different ideas. There were a lot of the southern cities that had no interest in that. The leadership in Atlanta at that time was accepting and brought the airport in. And of course, it turned Atlanta into a magnet for the South and people to relocate to Atlanta. And the mayors who were white in the late 50s and 60s were accepting of the change. That's what made Atlanta fertile for the birth of the civil rights movement. All the major organizations were in Atlanta and they uh, emanated from Atlanta and they led the change in the country. And what's always interesting in political science is understanding it's not about yelling and screaming to change or anything. It's about the ability to formulate public policy. And in Atlanta was the big place where they had the movement for registering to vote and electing black officials who in turn employed black people and allowed black people to get government contracts to start to build private businesses outside of the government. And I think that's what makes Atlanta unique, unique to all the other major cities in the country is that it, per capita, the black people in Atlanta had our largest income per capita in the country. They had the most, they own the most businesses of any city in the country. And people don't understand the United States has 40 million people out of out of 340. And Atlanta, again, as I was saying to you, you're talking about probably about 1.8 million black people, is the reason why it has always been the prominent city and leading the ending of apartheid, which would be American apartheid, which would be Jim Crow, uh, segregation, and secret laws and societies that were designed to, to oppress black people. 